What is up guys, Fars Knight here, welcome to this week's Friday and Five, where basically I choose a topic and I try to consolidate all the information I can into a five minute video. That's why I'm talking so fast, so let's get started. Alright, so today we're going to be talking about three courses that I feel comfortable recommending to you guys, a viewer, someone who wants to become an iOS developer, on how to learn iOS development, namely iOS 11 and Swift 4. So that brings us to our first one, and that is Stanford iOS 11 and Swift 4 course. Now. This one is not out yet, but we can expect it because they've made iOS 10, uh, iOS 9, probably iOS 8, and I don't know how long. Basically, they record an entire semester of their iOS development course in, at Stanford. If you don't know what Stanford is, it is one of the top computer science institutions in the nation. By nation, I mean United States. So it's very reputable. So what they do is consolidate an entire semester and kind of do a little bit of work in post-edit in order to make it more internet friendly and make this course available for free on iTunes so you can download it. You can expect this course to be out at the beginning of 2018 or in the middle of 2018, sometime around the summertime because I'm unsure if they're doing iOS 11 this fall semester of 2017, which in turn would be available at the beginning of 2018, or if the spring semester 2018 is when they're gonna do this course, and then it should be available just after that. So we're gonna see, but that, if you're watching this, if it's already out, take a look at that because it's Stanford. The only reason I would recommend anything over this course is because it's very computer science oriented. Many people may need prior programming experience or some type of just good knowledge of some type of programming or computer science in order to feel comfortable going in. Some people, if you're smarter than me, may feel comfortable from the get-go, but I've tried to dick it and I was even in computer science. I wanted to have something a little bit more fun to learn iOS development because I'm a computer science student finishing up my last year and it's kind of a little bit too much. You know, I had five courses of computer science. I wanted something a little bit less computer science oriented, if that makes sense. And that is a very good segue into the second course I'm going to recommend, and that is iOS 11 and Swift 4 from Beginner to Paid Professional by Mark Price and Dev Slopes. It is a Udemy course. It's also available on their website. And remember, all of the links to these courses, so you don't go to the wrong one, will be down in the description below. So be sure to check them out if you're interested. I say this is a good segue because the course I took was the predecessor to this course. It's the same instructors, which I think was like around three or four instructors in the whole course. You get a lot of information and it's a little bit more fun than your typical computer science. And that's kind of what drew me in to take this course. I'm not gonna go into full detail about this course because if you followed me for any period of time or if you're new, just go ahead and check my channel because my whole entire first season of iDev Journey, the series I created about learning iOS development, is about this course. I have a first look, a second look, and a final look, which is a final review of the iOS 10 course by the same people. So check that out. I give you my two cents on the instructors and kind of how everything's structured throughout the whole entire series, but namely those three videos right there. And I wouldn't expect a big change, a big difference other than the actual information given in the iOS 11 course. So now we're going to be taking it over to the third course I'm going to recommend, and that is the Ray Winderlich site. It's a whole website with a plethora of information. You can have access to some of the free information, or you can have access to some of the paid information through a $20 a month gateway, or if you pay annually, it'll come out to $15 a month. And there's just so much information that is structured into nice courses. And that may be overwhelming to some, but you wanna make sure you finish one course at a time, and I'll link like the beginner iOS development actual courses down in the description below, just so you know which ones I'm talking about. You wanna make sure you finish that and then finish the next section and the next, you wanna make sure you do it in order and you focus on one thing as opposed to focusing on everything. This this site is a iOS development site, so it kinda of takes you from beginning to end and then once you're at the end, there's you're always learning, so there's so much other information that you can learn outside of just like the structured courses. And that's something you wanna make sure you do is just keep everything structured and organized. And notice I mentioned he offers some free iOS development stuff, so you might wanna check that out to see if you like his teaching style because that's a huge thing with any course that you choose to take, whether it's in school or it's actually online, you wanna make sure the instructor fits your learning needs. Like that is why I recommended the Udemy course that I did because some instructors on Udemy I didn't really like or I couldn't understand the accent of some of them. This Udemy course was very easy to understand. Ray Winterlick, from my opinion, is very easy to understand as well as the Stanford course, but that's a little bit more mundane considering it's an actual like lecture in school. So that's just something to check out before you purchase or dive into any course is to see if you think how their teaching style correlates to your learning style. So keep that in mind. But that'll be it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you decide to go with one of these courses, let me know which one below. And especially if you've taken any of these courses, let me know which one you like or if you didn't like it, just let me know. I'm interested. Until next time, have a good one.